feeling more of a neutral. So, okay, let's, um, thank you. I, I mean, yeah. Right. So let's get started. We're a little, a few minutes late, just having everybody sign on. So this is their first uh, Met Talks, TED Talk style, and we're going to be doing these every two weeks. Really, really excited. So Matthew Golo is going to be presenting today, and Sabrina is going to be helping to facilitate and do some questions, and then we'll do question and answer at the end. Um, but we are doing, as part of our um, career development committee to try to focus on uh, experienced agents and helpful information. We're going to be doing these going on uh, going forward. So today is about how you turn your morning routine into like your money making machine and how you uh, how it helps you get your day right. Uh, and so Matthew and I started together in um, Ignite. We're Ignite buddies. Uh, 2014. That's right. January of 2014. So anyways, go ahead and get started. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us, tell us uh, where you're taking us today. Cool. So we're, we are going to be talking about your morning routine, but I want to do something different because I know everybody hears about a morning routine, but I want to deep dive into it because these are the thing, these are the kinds of things that I always want is I feel like a lot of the training, a lot of the things that we get are surface level right like if you read a book for an example most of it's surface level there might be some action items in there but they're not really going to give you nuts and bolts and details so i want to break it down um and uh, go over maybe even some myths about the morning routine that i've personally discovered and maybe this is my own opinion but i hope that it will help you so um why should you have a morning routine like why is it even important so number one, you're at your cognitive best, right? You haven't made a bunch of decisions, you're fresh, your mind has just gotten off of rest, your body has just gotten off of rest. And typically in the morning, uh, especially early before things start to get hectic or crazy in your house, um, you, you just, your brain functions and you have a lot of, of availability for thought. Um, the other thing is, is that it gives you time to wake up before you have to perform. And what I mean by that, specifically for me, I have two kids. So, you know, once my wife and both the kids are up, you can't really do anything, right? You're basically like making breakfast, talking, playing, uh, you're completely occupied. So having any time to yourself is gone out the window. And for people that might be single or may not have kids yet, then I would just say that if you're trying to wake up and then you're not giving yourself time to wake up. So like a lot of people, for example, they need to be at work at eight. So they get up at seven and they go right into rush, 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 rush. And you're not giving yourself time to really do anything. And so this is why a morning routine starts to be important or impactful or how you can actually turn a morning routine into making money. Um, the other reason is just so you're not behind, right? Um, in that example of getting up at seven and you have to be at work at eight, you're anxiety stricken from, from minute one. As soon as your feet hit the ground, you're automatically thinking like, oh my God, I only have an hour. It, it's raining outside. The traffic's going to be heavy. I'm not going to have time to eat. I mean, your brain is just all automatically into overload. You're not giving yourself any time to process thoughts or actually wake up. Um, typically, a morning routine implies that it's early, right? That it's earlier than when you normally wake up. And so you're getting a jump start on the day. Uh, I always like to say I'm getting a jump start on the mini, right? Because most people do what I just said. They, whatever, they get up at 6.30 or 7 and it's rush, 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 rush. Um, and then out the door, you know, makeup on in the car, shaving in the car. Um, not everybody gets that extreme with it, but typically you're in some type of panic mode to get to work. Um, and by the time you sit down at your desk, you're exhausted and you've wasted probably the best um, cognitive space in your head that you're gonna get for the, for the remainder of the day. Um, the other reason for a morning routine is because it's, it's time for you to be able to think without distraction. So a lot of us are thinking all day long. You hear something like, 
in the neighborhood of 60,000 thoughts a day. Well, a lot of times you get those thoughts and they're negative, they're self-damaging. Um, you're talking to yourself uh, about something that doesn't really build yourself up or you're thinking about something that you want to do, but you're never actually allowing yourself to process that if it's a good idea and then act on it. Um, so you might think about a lot of these things, but you aren't really giving yourself space to, to perform and do them. Um, so how, how do you do a morning routine? How does it even happen? How does it even make sense? Um, well, for me, and, and I know this is a kind of a KW thing, but for me, it really starts with one thing. So I basically broke down and tried to discover what, what the heck does that even mean? What is this one thing that, um, that you can do that such by doing it makes everything else easy or unnecessary? I'm like, this is the most absurd question ever because there's like a million things to do every single day. Well, I finally kind of broke that down, reread it, thought about it, studied it and figured out, okay, well, the one thing is typically something like laying out your clothes the night before, um, setting your alarm the night before, being intentional about setting your alarm for 4.30 or 530. But most people put their alarm right next to their bed. Well, when you do that, you uh, automatically give yourself the opportunity to pick it up turn it off and go right back to sleep. Like, eh, I tried. And you probably sometimes you may not even remember that you did that, right? So you're not giving yourself the idea. So the one thing for me was setting the phone so far away that I was forced to get out of bed. So what's the one thing that I can do such that by doing it, everything else becomes easy or unnecessary. It's literally setting my phone so far away that I'm forced to get out of bed and at least if I'm going to get back in bed, I have to make a pretty massive decision to actually turn around, turn my alarm off and get back in bed. I'm already up and moving. And so that became the one thing. And this is kind of how my morning routine started to evolve. And I started to understand books like the one thing, because at first you read it and it sounds awesome, but you really don't understand the concept of the one thing. Uh, let's see here. So I discovered the morning routine through books, through people. Um, when you really get on a kick of personal development, you start to realize that a lot of people talk about a morning routine. And most of them are different. Not everybody has the same mechanics to their morning routine. Not everybody has the same thought process around it, but they all have them. And so I started to notice um, you know, people that I, I might think are successful or whether they be authors or CEOs of companies or people that, um, you know, have a larger net worth than me, they typically are getting up early and have these morning routines and success leaves clues, right? So I'm looking at these clues. Um, so that morning routine just kept showing up. Uh, one of the books that I was exposed to, and I'm sure many of you have heard about it, is called The Miracle Morning. So I was like, okay, I'm going to give this a shot because I keep hearing about these morning routines. Why not read the book that is, uh, gives you kind of, it was kind of a guidebook of what a morning routine is and what to do. So um, taking a look at that, reading that um, was really, really insightful. But in that book, there's like six things in your morning routine. So your morning routine is about an hour in the book. And you do like meditation, exercise, reading, journaling, um, affirmations, and something else, right? So it, it's a lot of different little five to 10 minute sprints. Well, so I started doing that. It was making me crazy because it's like, I want to journal for an hour. I don't want to journal for five minutes or I like to exercise. Exercise is what fuels me. 10 minutes of exercise doesn't do squat for me. I need an hour, hour and a half. So I'm like, how can I, how on earth can I possibly have a morning routine that allows me to get an hour of exercise 
and journal and do my affirmations. It was just like on and on and on. I'm like, I'll, you know, it'll be 11 and I'll still be doing my morning routine. Um, so I had to figure out a way to give myself some grace and stop going crazy about the, the morning routine. I think we're, this is, this is one of the components for me that, um, that allowed me to say, okay, I need, I know I need a morning routine, but I'm not going to go crazy doing this, doing this deal. And for a while I was, I was like beating myself up. Like you're getting up early, but you're not really doing this full morning routine. And this is what the book tells you to do. And that's what you need to do. Well, I missed something in the book because there is a section in there that talks about basically um, creating your own and making something that is yours that works for you. So um, I believe pretty firmly that the book, The Miracle Morning, works. Um, I, think if, I think if 10 minutes of exercise, 10 minutes of prayer, 10 minutes of uh, writing, things like that work for you, 10 minutes of reading, if you can do all those things in 10 minute sprints and you feel fantastic about it, I think it's, I think it's an excellent morning routine, morning routine and a great guide. It just wasn't working for me personally. And one of the things we're going to talk about here in a minute is making your, uh, making your morning, <clears throat> excuse me, your morning routine. So I mentioned a minute ago for me, exercise is huge. Um, but having two kids, you know, it was tough for me to be able to do, you know, more of a journaling, thoughtful, uh, prayer type of morning routine and get an hour of exercise in a day. And so I was like starting to discover that my morning routine really needed to be focused or entrenched in exercise. And then some of the other things could go, um, could, could be in place of it afterwards. Right. Um, and I'm just looking at my notes here when I look down. So that was basically about it. I, I just, there was, that I was going to be able to spend an hour in the morning for my routine and then another hour at night to exercise uh, like I could when I, you know, before wife and kids. So, um, so how do you, how, how do you really effectively get this morning routine done? Well, for starters, you got to put it in the calendar, right? Diana Kokoska says, if it's not in your schedule, it does not exist. And then experiment with what works. Um, what's important to you? Is journaling important to you? Is reading important to you? Is listening to your, you know, a certain podcast important to you? Um, and, and I think it's okay to put two or three things on your list. And I think it's even okay to do the miracle morning with six things, as long as it do doesn't create a source of tension or overwhelm for you. Like it was for me. I was just like, I can't get all these things done. And I want to, if I'm journaling, I like want to journal, like not, it's not a 10 minute thing for me. It ends up being two hours. My thoughts start flowing, you know, or if I'm writing something like that. So, um, you got to also take baby steps. I think too many times people think, okay, Matthew said, do a morning routine. The one thing said, do a morning routine. The miracle morning said, do a one, do a morning routine. The podcast I just listened to said, do a morning routine. I'm just going to do it. Well, if you're already getting up at seven, I doubt you're going to start getting up at four 30, just bam, like that all of a sudden tomorrow. It's just like, I'm committed to a morning routine. I'm getting up at four 30 and that's going to be the, the way it is for the rest of my life. I mean, that's, uh, that's like losing 50 pounds in one day. Right. Um, so I think baby steps, um, try waking up 10 minutes early. Wake up 10 minutes early, early and journal and see if that even works for you. Does journaling, does journaling make you want to wake up in the morning? Does writing make you want to get up in the morning? Does prayer make you want to get up in the morning? Because the thing is, um, and I'm speaking from experience, morning routines get tough. They're difficult. It's hard to get up early in the morning. I like to sleep. We, we were kind of talking about this before we got on the call. I just hung up the phone with a client and the client told me her husband was still asleep. And this was at like 
1058. And I'm like, uh, wow. Um, but I, I mean, I, I did that when I was a kid. I like to sleep. Uh, I remember going to college and I'm like, I got to change this. I'm just going to have all 8 a.m. classes. And all my friends around me had 10 a.m. classes. And, you know, they were up playing basketball until two o'clock in the morning and then going to bed, going to bed at, uh, you know, 2.30 and getting up at, at 10 to barely squeeze in the class. And I, I changed that in my life and have slowly since college pulled my time that I'm getting up back. Um, so it didn't just happen overnight. It was baby steps from 20 years ago. Um, give yourself grace. I have a really, really hard time with this. I'm constantly berating on myself. Like you need to be better. You need to do this. You need, you know, all these other successful people or all these people that you follow are doing all these things, you know, show up or put up, you know, shut up or put up Matthew. And that was creating a lot of misery for me. Um, because you're basically just going around the whole, whole entire time, all the time, <laughs> beating yourself up. So you got to be able to be flexible, give yourself some grace. Now, I like to, I like to lean on myself to give myself that push, um, that edge. But if you go over the edge and it starts to create damage, you really, really got to be careful. Um, and I'm specifically speaking about this because a morning routine can cause a lot of these things to show up for you. So one of the things that I do right now is I usually um, I usually allow myself one day to not get up at 4:30 in the morning. I'll get up at 6:30 and allow myself to sleep in. That's it gives me some grace. Um, it gives me a it gives my body a day off from working out. It gives myself some time to rest um, and and kind of. Um, just have like a little bit of a rebirth in the middle of the week. And, and that has, for a long time, I struggled with it because I was like, well, you're not doing your morning routine every single day. You're a wimp, you know, get up and do it. But I feel like my body needs that. My mind needs that. Um, maybe my inner child needs that because he wants to rebel a little bit, but I think you have to listen to those things. So yeah, just getting really good at giving yourself grace and like listening to your body and what you need um, and don't overdo it to the point of damage. You know, bold law, your money expands to um, the extent that you do. And so when you're thinking about a morning routine and why it would make you money is because if you're, if you're getting up early, you're at your cognitive best you're actually thinking about your ideas and concepts, giving yourself time to that, to marinate that instead of rushing off to work. Um, and you're, you're basically allowing space and time for you to act on the things that you've wanted to create in your world. You're giving yourself time to act on the things that you want. So for an example, if you want to if you want to lose weight or get in better shape, what better time is it to throw that into your morning routine and actually get the hardest thing done in the, in the morning, in the middle of the day, or excuse me, in the morning before you get uh, started or before you're thrust into work and all the other challenges that happen, you know, after eight o'clock when everybody else is up and moving around and wanting things from you. Someone asked a question. Um, yeah, so Natasha, we're about, I'm about to kind of go into what I do personally for my morning routine. So, um, so my morning routine, I get up at 4.30 in the morning, or my alarm goes off at 4.30. Um, I get up. It's not on my nightstand. I have to get up and leave the bed to turn it off. And my wife's sitting, laying next to me. So if I don't get to it quickly, it's going to wake her up, and I feel bad about that. And so it, I have all these little triggers to force me to get out of the bed. Um, then I immediately go to the bathroom, change clothes, because I'm gonna go work out, right? That's my morning routine. Is tip, most of my morning routine is actually exercise. Um, and then I brush my teeth and I get a full glass of water, like a pint-sized beer glass. So it's more than eight ounces. And I'm basically just giving myself a few minutes to wake up and just drinking that glass of water. I'm not like pounding it. 
but it, you know, it takes me 30, 40 seconds, maybe a minute to put it down. Why do you do that? Why is water so important? Most people don't drink water. Um, your body is made up of water. Water helps you um, feel alive. Water helps you go to the bathroom. Water helps your appetite. Um, it, you're basically drinking liquid fuel first thing in the morning to get everybody alive. So those are, that's how simple my morning routine is. It's my one thing, alarm far away from the bed, getting up early enough before kids and wife and the rest of the world, um, a full cup of water, right? Brushing your teeth. So you don't, you know, you start to feel clean and it's just something that makes me feel good. Um, and then I'll get it at 5 a.m. I'm doing an hour of, what, of hardcore exercise typically. Like um, I usually go to like a boot camp or some type of class because I like competition. Um, I want to stare into the eyes of an, of an opponent or even if it's myself looking in a mirror on the treadmill and I'm sprinting at like level 20, um, you know, feeling like I'm gonna pass out because I'm like, we're, we're in a race and this is the hardest part of the day. Um, exercise makes me feel alive, it makes me feel good. Um, it releases testosterone. Um, there's a lot of really great benefits to exercise. Just the act of sweating is amazing. I mean, if you think back, you know, we didn't used to have these cushy jobs where you sit in a chair all day. Um, so in today's world, we don't need as much food because um, we're not exercising all day. We're not moving all day. Um, and so getting up and getting that knocked out kind of goes back to like early man. And you need that. So that's it, that's my morning routine. At 6.15, I'm in the shower. I usually triage emails just to make sure there's nothing like really crazy or important in there from a client. Um, but I do get sucked into the email and like start checking, you know, dumb, dumb stuff. If it's not important, I just either leave it alone or delete it. And then, so that's a very quick thing. But then after that, it's basically hanging out with the kids. I make my breakfast, make breakfast for the whole family. And I make my lunch to come here, which is another very important part to like the whole scheme of things is, is making my own healthy lunch. So I'm, number one, I'm not leaving the office and wasting a bunch of time in the middle of the day to go have lunch. The only time I do it is usually if it's important or client related. I don't, I'm not going uh, I'm not going to lunch just for fun, typically. Now, um, you know, some people may say that's ridiculous and you're never having any fun, but I can assure you I have, I have fun. But when I'm at work, I'm at work. Uh, uh, morning routine. Well, it fulfilled me doing something that I thought about all the time. So I'm sitting here thinking about a morning routine would really be helpful over and over and over. So by me actually getting up and doing it, I feel good, right? A lot of times I think depression comes from inaction, um, feeling down about yourself, not doing things. It, it, a lot of times I think it comes from not doing the things that you think about. Um, I'm waking up before work, so I always feel so much better my day is so much better. I'm, I'm better on the phone. I'm better for other people when I get up early and I actually give myself time to wake up. If I get up at 6.30 on my day off from the morning routine and I come into the office, it's just never as good, as, as good of a day. And so that's where the money part comes in. Um, the exercise and the water, those are the, those are the things that serve me. Um, so one last thing here, and then we'll go to some questions. So how do you make your plan? Um, decide on, just decide you're gonna do it. Decide you're gonna act. Um, one small step at a time. 
you know, make a small change, 10, 15 minute change. Um, and then what makes you feel good? Is it water? Is it walking? Is it stretching? Is it yoga, reading, writing, exercising, affirmations, prayer? Um, I think everybody's different and certain things speak to you. And so I think putting two or three of those items together and maybe getting up 20 or 30 minutes early to start is just, that would be a great place to start building your plan. And I think you have to experiment too, to make sure that you're listening to your body and listening to what, what it is that you need. Um, do the things that you do, the things that you're constantly thinking about and not doing. I think that's a great morning routine right there is if, but don't make it 30 things. A lot of us think about 30 things. Well, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I want to do this, this, well, what's really, really, really important. If you have 30 things that you want to do, probably only two of them matter. So do those two and wake your morning routine for the next 15 days could just be waking up and thinking about those 30 things and culling it down to two. And then your morning routine would switch to just acting on those two things before the rest of the day gets away from you. Um, and then don't overdo it. Don't try to do six, 10, 15 things. Don't start waking up at 4.30 tomorrow. Um, you know, if you wake up at seven, get up at 6.30. If you wake up at 6 30 get up at six start slowly kind of cutting it back and figuring out what it is that makes you feel good and then i would say reread the one thing read the miracle morning uh darren hardy has a really good morning routine so you can start to see other people's examples and formulate your morning routine around that but don't take those examples at face value and think that you have to do the exact same thing so that's my morning routine that's how i make money with it um, I'm, I'm, when I'm up early and when I'm doing the things that I know I need to do, I feel better. I get my exercise in and I'm charged and ready to rock and roll for the day. And it makes the one thing that we should all be doing lead gen 50 times easier because I'm awake and I'm ready to rock and roll. If I get up at six 30 and I rush the office, I'm not ready to be on the phone or doing any kind of lead gen and I lose for the day. So you can make a bunch of money or lose money. Matthew, um, that was awesome information. I think my biggest takeaway from that is uh, I have attempted to do the miracle morning and I love all of the savers, like the six or seven things that you're supposed to do. But I felt like I was like five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. And, and like, I, I enjoyed it, but I also felt like I was like, timer right like I literally had a timer on my phone telling me oh you're done you're done journaling like go on to the next thing and it felt nice doing each of them but it felt very rushed anyway and so I like that you're like sometimes you got to adjust it to yourself which is good um two questions people have been asking just real quick um and then we'll open it to one or two questions from people on the line so one what time do you go to bed um if you're waking up at four or two when do you try to get into the office every day so I go to bed around 9, 9.30 at the latest. If I go to bed at 10, it's really hard to get up at 4.30. Uh, sometimes I do it anyways. Um, uh, my wife did not used to do it, but now she actually tries to take my days. Yeah. I was going to say, especially like a single person is different, but if you have a family and someone you're sleeping next to you, it's like... Yeah. I would think it would be helpful if you're both kind of on the same schedule. Um, yeah, and then we're, what? We're not on, we're not 100% on the same schedule, but like Wednesdays and Fridays, she gets up early and goes and does exercise. And I usually get up early or when, usually Wednesday or Friday is my day off for one of those days. And then the other day I get up early and do, um, I either journal or do something not non uh, exercise related or I actually go in my backyard and, and do my own exercise routine so I'm not going to a class or a gym so for for weekends other than your day off that you give you what like yourself once a week you're doing the same morning routine I'm not well. I'm not 4 30 on the weekends I get up sorry at you, you cut out what is oh six okay I don't I don't do it I don't do that morning routine on the weekends um what do you, when do you get into the office? Um, I usually leave my house between 
thirty and seven forty five. So I'm here anywhere from you. It's usually seven between seven thirty and eight is when I'm here most of the time. Sometimes a little after eight, depending on my play time. And Natasha wants to know um, what you do about parties. So if you go out and have maybe not right now during COVID, but if you're having dinner or having wine even at home, or what, how do you handle that the next morning? I don't really go out and do that kind of thing on the weekdays. Um, if I do, I start at five. Okay, and I think we have maybe um, I still time go for to bed at nine or nine thirty. Yeah. What? That sounds right. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I cut you off by accident. Um, does anyone else have any questions? Like one or two other questions? Yes. So. I don't, if I go out during the week, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go out at from six to seven or I, like, I'm not going out at eight or nine or 10 o'clock. And, and if I'm, yeah. I'm, if I'm hanging out with you, even if I'm having a good time, I'm going to leave because my morning routine and all that, even if I've had a couple drinks, I'm still going to get up early and work out. I just don't, that's more important to me than. Than getting crazy. <laughs> I have found that too. I'm also, I'm also 41 now and I have kids and <laughs> I, I don't give a shit older. about going out and drinking like I did when I was 32. Really honest, so it's different perspective. That's funny. Yeah, um, no, I agree. And you just have to, like you said, just like your morning routine, you have to figure out what's important to you. And if maybe someone else's morning routine starts at seven or eight, I, you know, whatever that looks like to you. But I think starting your day, I have a real bad habit of getting up and immediately checking emails because I want to solve problems. And it just gets yeah. you in a crazy place because you are putting out fires the second that you wake up. And I think you're so right. Like, you know, you have to take time for yourself and to get your mind right or else, or else the rest of the day is chaos. It is. And you, know, you turn, it goes into like reaction mode. And I hate that. I hate when I'm all I'm doing all day is reacting and I'm never, I'm never getting that clear train of thought on like what actually needs to happen. Um, and I think when you go straight to email and straight to problem solving, um, I know at least for me, if I do that, I'm not getting my legion in or it's not going to be good. I'm not going to get 20 contacts. I'm going to get five and then I'm going to be I'm, the whole entire time I'm thinking about what I need to be doing or what I think I need to be doing. And then it just never happens. And then I do the same shit the next day and the next day. And that now next, next thing you know, you haven't lead, done any Legion all week or all month. Yeah, that's very true. Sabrina, do you have any uh, questions? Yeah. Well, I had a, I, I guess more of an um, observation. Um, so hearing that you get up early and work out that's one of the things that um i've come to note as a um i guess like a theme of, among successful agents and just successful people in general um very rarely do people that are successful get up late in the day is what i've uh when people talk about those things that's one thing that i've noticed so I think that that is definitely um, a recipe for success. And thank you for confirming that. Yeah. Yeah. All I mean, right. awesome. you know, I think back to when I was a kid, my dad was always gone before I left or before I got up, you know I mean? Like he was, he was up, he was up and he was in his room praying and reading the Bible or he was working and uh, he wasn't exercising, but he was doing the morning routine and is, is, now that I'm older and I think about different things, um, I see that he's doing that. My, my father-in-law, my, my wife's uh, dad, um, he's a very successful, you know, solopreneur for the most part. He's got some employees, but he's not a huge business. But he, I mean, he gets up at 4.30 and he sits on the couch and has his coffee and wakes up. He prays, he wakes up, he thinks about the day he thinks about his future he thinks about what he wants in his life he thinks about how he's going to treat all of his, all of his kids including me and how he's going to impact people during the day and he is uh, a very very strong light in this world and we need more people like him um and i try to be more and more like him all the time he's he's been a fantastic 
uh, father-in-law one, but also just somebody that shows you without telling you how to live a fulfilled, strong life. That's awesome. I think that's a um, perfect note to end on. I think we got most everybody's questions and um, we're a little bit over time, but we started late. So next week we'll start on time. Uh, I'm sorry, not next week. In two weeks is the next one. And I believe Matthew is facilitating that. We're going to have Bruce Ham on. Um, so we'll put out a note, but that's going to be July 9th. So Thursday is going to be every other Thursday, uh, always at 11. And the idea is that we're going to start at 11. We're going to get really detailed, um, just like Matthew did, about like actual steps and like giving yourself grace and that sort of thing. Um, real advice, pro tips. Uh, and then we'll have 10 minute, five or 10 minutes of audience questions. So, um, Matthew, thank you for being our first. Thank you. Thank you for yeah, that was fun. I appreciate yeah. it. I love doing this kind of thing. That so was thank you guys. Really good. Hopefully you learned something. I certainly did. I'm reminding yeah. myself of, uh, you know, drink your own juice. Yeah, it's a good reminder. And give yourself grace. That's a good one, too, because I think there are a lot of um, very driven people that tend to be really hard on themselves, and maybe it's counterproductive sometimes. So, yeah, I agree. Reminder. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much. Um, we'll have a recording of this if you want to go back and um, invite an agent to the next one. And the more people we have, then the more ability we have to convince awesome agents like Matthew to share their information, their knowledge with us. All right. All right. Y'all have a good day. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you for sharing, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew.